Commander Replay. Red White Angel Reanimator is back. How will our angels fare against Lazav, Queen Marchesa, and Maelstrom Wanderer? Find out next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, I want to take a few moments to give a shout out to my super awesome Patreon supporters. Apologies if I butcher any names. We have Bad Karma Delivery, aka David, Daniel Vermin, Jiraiya Nemo, Kenzie Bruce, Luis Dunford Guevara, and Ben Graton. Thank you guys so much for your support. If you want to help support the channel and be able to vote on which decks I make into videos next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below. Alright, welcome back everyone, playing some Aurelia Angel Reanimator, and today we'll be facing off against Lazav Demir Mastermind, Queen Marchesa, and... Maelstrom Wanderer, so very solid opponents. If you guys have been following the channel for a while, you know that I have no love for Maelstrom Wanderer. They will probably uh, eat up quite a bit of our focus this game. Though I have learned that you can't just, like, beat up on a Maelstrom Wanderer opponent all game and have that be okay. They will back at you, and they do have some really powerful stuff in the deck. So, our turn one, we draw into a Devout Witness. Would like to catch another land at some point off the top here, but... Uh, for now, let's play this Arid Mesa, crack this Arid Mesa... We'll get a plateau right here since we know that we have to bounce the land anyway. Nothing to do with one mana, and we will pass the turn. Search for his Kanta coming down for the Lazav seems pretty good. Uh, luckily we have that Devout Witness in hand, would love to get that thing going. Transguild Promenade for the Queen Marchesa. I don't know why you would run that over something like a Vivid Land or Path of Ancestry. I mean, if the land comes into play tapped, there's so many options that you shouldn't have to also pay one for it. Wastes for the Maelstrom Wanderer opponent. Weird. Playing an Eldrazi deck? Brings it back to our turn. We draw into a Worn Power Stone right here. Ooh, we're going to have to discard something. So right here, let's play the Boros Garrison. Return the Plateau. And we will discard Iona to hand size. Ashiok Nightmare Weaver coming down. Going to exile the top three of our library. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. Gets an Archangel of Thune. Also a Day of Judgment and a Sacred Foundry. Orzov Signet coming down. Authority of the Consoles. Oh, that card is so good against us. Blasted Landscape. Yeah, opponent might be doing the Eldrazi thing. Weird that they would have that much colorless mana in a Maelstrom Wanderer deck. Forbidden Orchard. So we catch a land off the top. Lands are good. Play this Plateau. Let's play the Burnished Heart right here. Authority of the Consoles will trigger. Search for his Cont trigger for the Lazav. So by the way, I'm trying out two new cards in this deck. Trying out Altar of Dementia and Mesmeric Orb. Haven't had a chance to resolve either of them yet, but I think the Altar of Dementia should be really, really good. Mesmeric Orb will be interesting. Um, it's a funny card in that it'll, it'll draw a lot of attention from our opponents. If someone's using Spot Removal to blow up your Mesmeric Orb, that means they're not blowing up something else important. Uh, also, it's a way for us to get some things into the graveyard. So I like the fact that it can get some creatures into the graveyard for us and cause a little bit of chaos for our opponents. It tends to be really good against, like, blue decks that don't play a lot of permanents. Looking to do, like, spell-based combos, because when you do that, you're looking for certain pieces. When those pieces start getting milled, it becomes very hard to execute your combo, so... Shadow Mage Infiltrator, there's one I haven't seen in a long time. And Ashiok already up to seven. Next turn they can lay down the, uh, Archangel of Thune if they want to. Ooh, no mercy for the Queen Marchesa. So Queen Marchesa looks like they might be on Pillow Fort. Another target for that Devout Witness. Opponent's gonna give us a 1-1 creature. Sounds good to me. We'll give us a little bit of ammo to swing into that Ashiok with. Want to keep that thing from ultimating. There's a Makoro for the Maelstrom Wanderer. Card draw is always nice. We draw into a Hedron Archive. Interesting. Okay. So let's start by playing this land. That gives us four total. If we play Hedron Archive, then we only have two, which means we can't sacrifice the Burnished Heart. It's kind of annoying. Either way, let's go to combat and swing into the Ashiok. Everything in the Ash Ashiok. So Ashiok down to four loyalty. We'll go ahead and crack our Burnished Heart right here. We have three red sources, so I feel pretty good about that. We'll get two planes up to our Ameria. And we will pass turn like that. I do foresee a problem in that uh, one of our planes is obscured by this Archangel of Thune. That could be that could be an issue for us. At some point, we're going to need to use that austere command to blow up the enchantments. I would love to be able to do that before uh, Search for His Conta flips over. Uh, opponent hits us with the Ashiok again. This time hits a Blasphemous Act. Ooh, Misfell Planes. Well, this deck doesn't rely super heavily on Misfell Planes, but it is a nice thing to have. And a plane, so it could be worse. Though, uh, we don't have a land to make for our next land drop, so that's... Always a little bit concerning. Lazav coming into play. Shadow Mage Infiltrator going to swing into the Maelstrom Wanderer. They get to draw a card. Opponent going to cast her Queen Marchesa. That should work out nicely into the austere command that we're about to play. Opponent will become the Monarch. Opponent's going to use the Makoro. Let's see who they give the token to with the Forbidden Orchard. 
Let me give it to us. Nice. So I've got some pretty big plans lined up for this turn. Authority of the consoles trigger one more time. Let's see what we draw into with Makoro. Would not be upset to see a land right here. Uh, Steel Shaper's Gift is okay. Queen Marchesa going to swing into the Lazav opponent. Eh, probably better off swinging into that Ashiok, but... And Lightning Greaves for the Queen Marchesa. Maelstrom going to use the Makoro again. There's a Dawnbreak Reclaimer. Not the land that we're looking for, but still one more chance on our draw step to find it. And going to give us the Forbidden Orchard. So Maelstrom Wanderer really wants to be our friend. Feels unusual for me to uh, partner up with a Maelstrom Wanderer, but seems like that's what's going to happen right here. There's a Solemn Simulacrum. Uh, but I think right here, yeah, let's do the austere command like we had talked about. We're going to do enchantments and creatures four or more. And I like this because that's going to hit search for his Kanta, no mercy, which is really bad. Authority of the consoles is really bad for Aurelia. Um, so a lot of nasty stuff. I decided to go with the creatures over the artifacts, uh, just because we get, mo we get a nice little tempo play out of our opponents losing Queen Marchesa and Lazav. Uh, while lightning greaves are very good, we would only hit the lightning greaves and a signet if we went for artifacts. So I just felt like going for the creatures was a little bit better right here. Because Lazav is basically just waiting to mill something big. Queen Marchesa trying to get their pillow fort set up. So I like this plan. So big creatures and enchantments going away. Send two tokens into the Ashiok. And one into the Queen Marchesa to get the Monarch token. So we become the Monarch. Ashiok down to four loyalty. And we'll pass a turn like that. Get our Monarch trigger at the end step. There's the land we were looking for. Uh, we will have to discard the hand size though. We'll get rid of the Acroma. And, ooh, what, what's the second card? I guess we get rid of Worn Power Stone, because now we're at a point, we don't really have the time to play a tapped artifact. Uh, plus, we have the Hedron Archive, so... And there there are ways to get that back. If we have, uh, if we get a Maria Shepherd, we can get that back into play, so... Opponent hits three more lands. Burnished Heart for the Lazav. Kamal, console of allocation coming down for the Queen Marchesa. Interesting card. And Eshiok's gonna say, nope, they're gonna perplex that. Counter target spell unless controller discards their hand. Probably not worth a Kambal. Ooh, Sword of Feast and Famine. I would have counted the Sword of Feast and Famine personally. Oh, uh, with Lightning Greaves down. How much mana do they have? Yeah, I mean, any creature could be pretty good. So we're definitely going to want to leave a token back to block. Opponent didn't attack with the Shadow Mage Infiltrator, which means that the Monarch token's still on us. Which means I probably won't do a lot of attacking this turn. Probably will just try to set up with mana. Maybe that Devout Witness. Thinking like Hedron Archive, Devout Witness, Psalm Simulacrum, if there's enough mana, there's probably not enough to do all of those, but I think that's where we want to be. Opponent going to use the Forbidden Orchard and give the token to us again. Sweet. Plays an Urza's Factory and going to use the Makoro one more time. There's a Chaos Warp. Here's Ancient Tomb. Ancient Tomb is sweet. So let's play the Ancient Tomb right here. See what this does. Start with Hedron Archive. Okay, yeah. So then Hedron Archive into Solemn Simulacrum. Get a Plains. Uh, then we will Steel Shaper's Gift. Choices are Lightning Greaves, Mask of Memory, Sword of the Animist. Lands are looking okay. I think I like Mask of Memory the most. Lightning Greaves is also really good too, though. Especially in this deck. Because then we can get a big creature back into play one way or another, and then Greaves it up. And it's got haste, and that's always really exciting. But I think it's going to be Mask of Memory right here. Do we need to do any attacking? Eh, to get two into the Ashiok doesn't really seem worth it. Would love to not get hit by the sort of Feast and Famine, so leaving the Spirits back seems like probably a good idea. Yeah, I think no attacks right here. And we get to draw, because we are still the Monarch. Sweet! That Shadow Mage Infiltrator totally should have hit us last turn. Uh, if they did, then they would have gotten the Shadow Mage draw and the Monarch draw. Ooh, that's a Sepulchral Primordial. Hmm. Bet they go for that Iona. Uh, luckily, we have removal in two colors in our hand, so we can get rid of the Iona if we need to. Let's see what color they go for. Also going to get the Kambal. Chooses red. Uh, that means we have to use the Path to Exile. It's not really where I was hoping to go with that, but... More annoyingly, that gives them a flying blocker, so we can't just get in in the air like I like to do. Opponent's going to send the Shadow Mage into the Queen Marchesa. They'll get a draw. There's an austere command going for creatures three or less and creatures four or greater. So that's going to get all the creatures. Nice. That's going to get opponent's Burnished Heart, which they didn't crack at any point. And it's really painful when you lose a Burnished Heart that you failed to crack. And we'll get to draw with the Solemn Simulacrum. So that sounds nice. That's actually a really good board wipe right there. That board wipe helps out. Ooh, we draw a Wrath of God of our own. So we have a board wipe whenever we are needing it. Um, I'm thinking this turn, Dawnbreak Reclaimer, and if we have enough mana, Aurelia. 
Yeah, I think we'll have exactly enough for Aurelia and Dawnbreak Reclaimers. That's super sweet. We can give the Cabal back to the Queen Marchesa opponent. Seems pretty solid. Definitely don't want to give the Sepulchral Primordial back to uh, Lazav. Let's get a Makoro again. Do Temple of the False Gods so we can get a little mana boost right there. Well, honestly, I might just try to get the planes down. Want to get that planes count up in case we run into a Maria. Opponent going to give us another Forbidden Orchard trigger. Sweet. Oh, we draw into a Signet. Okay, so I think in that case, Temple of the False God. See how much... I'm going to tap out all of our mana right here. Except the Ancient Tomb. I'm not going to hold off on that one for a sec. How much mana is that? So that's 9, 11. We'll have 13 if we tap the Ancient Tomb. So that's enough to get this Boros, char Boros Signet down. Cast Aurelia. Four mana left. Get the Dawnbreak Reclaimer into play. So, sweet little turn for us right there. Kind of spent last turn setting up our mana to be able to do some big stuff. And uh, feel pretty good about how we're set up now. So, Aurelia and the token into the Ashiok. Aurelia attacks. We get a second combat step. And we'll have just enough damage to take down the Ashiok. So, Ashiok finally going down after exiling a good ten cards from our library. Give or take. A Dawnbreak Reclaimer... We'll give the Kambal like we talked about, and we'll see what creature they want to give us. Even if it's only the Solemn Simulacrum, that's still pretty sweet. Burnished Heart, also not bad. Yep, they're going to go. They're going to give us the Burnished Heart, so that is the least impactful of the creatures in our graveyard, but that is all right. And we draw into a Marshall's Anthem. Sweet. Uh, do we discard the Plains or the Strip Mine? Never know when a nasty land's going to come up, so maybe discard the Plains. Plus, we have the Burnished Heart and the Solemn Simulacrum, so we can get some Plains that way. Our planes count is currently four, so we need to do some stuff to uh, get that up. Demir Doppelganger coming into play. Exile target creature from a graveyard. Demir becomes a copy of that card. Ooh. Iona's a pretty good target. Yep, and that's what they're going to go for. Like I said, we still have removal in both colors. And what uh, what color are they choosing? I can't tell what... Uh, maybe we check the log. It's not showing up right on the... Oh, wait a second. Exile target creature from a graveyard. Demir becomes a copy, so Iona doesn't actually enter the battlefield, so there's no colors under Iona currently. And Maelstrom Wanderer just going to scoop it. Path to Exile going to come down on the Iona. Suddenly I feel pretty good about where we're at with things, though I kind of wish we went for the Lightning Greaves as opposed to the Mask of Memory, but Mask of Memory can still find us some good things. Queen Marchesa coming back into play. It drives me crazy that Red Akroma does not have haste. Has, like, every other weird kind of ability on it, but haste is not one of them. Queen Marchesa going to suit up the sword, swing into Lazoth, put the boots on Queen Marchesa. Sounds good. So, Queen Marchesa got to get the Sword of Feast and Famine trigger. Going to untap all their lands and get to do some more stuff this turn. Feast and Famine, pretty good magic card. Interestingly, life totals are still really high in this game. People haven't really been, uh... That Ashiok, well, I guess that Ashiok soaked up a lot of combat damage. Because they just kept plussing that thing, and yeah... That thing said gain like 15 life for the Lazav opponent. Or at least I guess for all opponents. We could have attacked elsewhere also, but did not because of the Ashiok. That's a Sun Home. Sun Home is super sweet. Play the Sun Home. Uh, what to do this turn? Hmm. Let's start by playing the Mask of Memory. That just seems like a lot of free value. Kambal's gonna trigger. He's gonna ding us for some life. Actually, this will be fun with Kambal down, because with Kambal, opponent's gonna gain a lot of life, and our deck... Our deck, if you let it go long enough, can really do a lot of damage, so... Especially as it gets later in the game, if someone's at, like, 20 life, it only takes you Aurelia plus, like, two angels to do that much damage. If someone's at, like, 60 life, this deck can pound that kind of damage out if you get, like, Aurelia, Gisela, and a few other things. So, that'll be exciting. Um, right here... So equip the Mask of Memory to the Aurelia. We don't really even need the card draw that much, because the Maelstrom Wanderer fed us pretty good with Makoro all game, which was nice. But... More cards is always better than less cards. Just going to send everything into the Lazav. One thing we don't have is a Teferi's Protection. That's a card that I would like to see right here, uh, just to not get blown out by a board wipe. But we do have the Marshall's Anthem, so we can recover pretty well if we need to. So Mask of Memory is going to trigger. We'll get the draw and discard. Draw two, discard one. Um, Homeward Path, always pretty helpful. Guess we go with the Strip Mine right there. Uh, always some chance that our stuff gets stolen, especially with a blue deck. And go to combat again. Mask of Memory going to trigger one more time. Ooh, there's the Altar of Dementia. Ooh, yeah. Oh, there's Hamor Battlements. We can look for that one too. Well, discard the Homeward Path. Uh, we can get Hamor Battlements down next turn, which I really, really like. Play the Altar of Dementia. Kambal is going to hit us. Also funny with the Kambal down, Lazav can't make like a ton of plays. Because uh, if they do, they'll just die to Kambal. So we put them in an interesting position. Let us get the... Let's get this Devout Witness down. We'll leave the rest of our mana up to uh, mess around with our instant speed stuff. Uh, end step Dawnbreak Reclaimer is going to trigger. 
So if we give the Sepulchral prim Primordial, they'll be able to get one creature back. Chances are they'll give us the Solemn and then take the Acroma. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I don't really want them to have the Acroma. So uh, I think we're just going to have to choose not to use the trigger on Dawnbreak. Jason Raveler of Secrets coming down. That's not a board wipe. Clever Impersonator coming down. That's reasonable. What do they copy? Sphere of Safety, maybe? Nope, going to go with the Dawnbreak Reclaimer. Going to return Aurelia to our owner's hand. Hmm. Do we use Altar of Dementia on Aurelia, or do we just let it go to the hand? Eh, I think we just let it go to the hand. It's not too hard to recast it. So Dawnbreak Reclaimer is going to trigger for our opponent. Let's see where they point it. Gonna Someone's going to fire off a Vampiric Tutor. Didn't see who cast that. So that's Queen Marchesa casting that Vampiric Tutor. Wouldn't be surprised to see a board wipe coming. If it does, I'm very excited to try out this Altar of Dementia. Opponent's going to give us a creature back. Uh, what did they... Did it tell us what they chose? No, it does not tell us what they chose. They can have the Shadow Mage Infiltrator. We get a Solemn Simulacrum back, so a little more mana ramp. Ooh, Vandal Blast, you say? Hmm. Um, we would lose Mask of Memory, Hedron Archive. Solemn Simulacrum, okay, I can live without that one. So I guess start by sacking the Solemn Simulacrum. We'll draw a card and mill two. Here's a Miraculous Recovery. Puts a Karma Guide in there. Well, yeah, milled a total of two cards with Altar of Dementia, and it looks like it's pulling its weight already, and there's a Ray of Dawnbringer. Ooh, we are going to have a turn. All right, let's just... Uh, do we want lands with Burnish Heart, or do we just want to mill ourselves more? I think we just mill ourselves more. So we had a Path of Ancestry, and looks like a Thran Dynamo on the last mill. Sort of the Animus coming down for the Queen Marchesa. This is, <laughs> is going to be glorious. We are going to do so much damage. Going to put the Sword of the Animus on Kambal. Thing into us. Okay. Uh, we can take it. Uh, they do have the Sword of Feast and Famine, though. Hmm. So I think we, we Chaos Warp the Feast and Famine. And then we'll use Devout Witness on the uh, Sphere of Safety. However, ooh, if we do that, then that means we can't end step Miracle. Uh, like, we have four mana left. Oh, I guess we just... Yeah, let's just... Uh, we'll go with the Miraculous Recovery right here. So Miraculous Recovery on Karmic Guide. Uh, I'm going to use the Ancient Tomb just so we can leave mana up for Path of Exile in case something goes really wrong. So Miraculous Recovery. <laughs> Love this card. Getting Karmic Guide. Getting... Ray of Dawnbringer, block Kumbal, block Queen Marchesa with the Karmic Guide. <laughs> Miraculous Recovery is such a good card. <laughs> oh my god, I love that card so much. People just never see it coming. Like, it's so underplayed that no one no one really even knows about it, so it's not a thing that they're uh, counting on happening. Because I'm sure Queen Marchesa had more things that they wanted to do. Uh, we get an Echo on Karmic Guide. We get Ray of Dawnbringer choosing the Red Acroma. Red Acroma into play. Karmic Guide's going to get sacrificed. There's a Sunblast Angel. Well, that would only get one thing, so it's not super exciting. Play the Hainware Battlements. Uh, we probably want to haste that Red Acroma. All right, so how much mana do we need? We'll need two for the Hainware Battlements, six for Aurelia. That's, that's essentially nine, and then 12 to Chaos Warp. Yeah, we should have that much mana. So we'll start with the Chaos Warp. Chaos Warp, the Sphere of Safety. Ooh, I don't think we have enough red mana to do all of that. Uh, undo, undo, undo. Yep, we do not have enough red mana. That's unfortunate. Uh, we could use the Devout Witness instead of the... We already used the Chaos Warp. Crap. Hmm. <laughs> well, uh, Rayleigh is going to be our best bet, I think. It's going to give us more damage than hasting the uh, red Acroma. Still got Path the Exile up. We got a Wrath of God if we need it. Swords of Plowshares we also have. Only have one mana. Could have used our colorless. Yeah, <laughs> definitely used my colored mana the wrong way this turn. That is for sure. We're going to send Dawnbreak Reclaimer into the Lazav. Send everything else into the Queen Marchesa. So here comes the damage. So Queen Marchesa goes down to 38. We get the Monarch Trigger. Send two flying creatures into the Lazav. Everything else at the Queen Marchesa. Uh, we're going to leave Devout Witness back, just in case we need to blow anything up. Opponent's going to block our Dawnbreak Reclaimer with theirs. They will trade. Rhea taking down the Lazav. So Lazav to negative one. Just the Queen Marchesa left. And we will pass the turn like that, leaving up our instant speed trickery. We do draw a card. It's a mountain. Could have used that this turn. Would have had an extra 12 damage from the Acroma. But not too, too worried about it. We should be able to just close the game out this turn anyway. As long as there's no board wipe or instant speed trickery. Uh, this, guy, this is the kind of deck that really wants to play things like Comeuppance. I'm just going to send in everything. Interesting. Still has the Sword of Feast and Famine down. Um, got boots. 
protection from black and green. It's a 5-5 with death touch and haste. I think that means we just use the devout witness to get rid of the uh, sword of feast and... F well, they didn't use all any of their mana. Hmm. Oh, this could be... They could have a board wipe in hand. Yeah, that could be the play. Um, so just throw the Radachroma in front of the Queen Marchesa. Opponent gets the Monarch Trigger back. See what they're planning for their main phase two. Oh, Ugin. Uh-oh. Uh, really wish we still had our Altar of Dementia. Eee. Can't hit Radachroma. That's good. Can't hit Rhea either. Get the rest of our stuff. Gonna go X6. Yep, that's gonna get a bunch of things. Uh, right here, let's get rid of the Sword of Feast and Famine. We'll discard the Sunblast Angel, I'm thinking. So we actually only lose two things. We lose Devout Witness and and Aurelia. We, we lost Aurelia also, but... Yeah, all things considered, that's uh, not the most impactful Ugin I've ever seen. And that's the that's the beauty of playing creatures that cost 8 and 9 in your deck. Ugin does not hit them immediately after coming into play. So, Raya Dawnbringer, let's get... What do we have? I think it's just going to be Dawnbreak Reclaimer. Yeah, we'll go Dawnbreak Reclaimer, give it haste. Assuming we have enough mana to also get Aurelia back down. We draw Angelic Renewal, play the Mountain, recast our Commander, use Hainware Battlements on the Dawnbreak Reclaimer, Go to combat. Do we have lethal? How much is that? That's 10, 15, 18, 36. Yeah, we have lethal. Uh, they could have removal in hand, so we should kill Ugin while we're at it, but go to combat. So opponent's at 34, and we should be able to take him down from 34. That's that's what I was talking about earlier. This deck, if you let it go long enough, can really pump out some damage. So opponent down to 16, Ugin goes down, and send everything again. So it looks like opponent's going to make us wait for them to time out. We are not going to do that. Uh, as I thought about it more, there is they have only one untapped mana open. Nothing that's going to stop all that damage coming in. Uh, so we're going to scoop it up right here. And yeah, Angel Reanimator doing its thing. Uh, we did get a lot of help from the Maelstrom Wanderer opponent who gave us those tokens early on, which did a lot in terms of keeping down that Ashiok and just giving us some blockers and kind of having some meat to uh, block with things. Also, the Makoro kept our hand super, super full. So when you're playing against opponents who might give you some inadvertent card draws, some sort of uh, group hug deck, things like K&T, uh, this deck can really take advantage of that because seeing even just a couple extra cards based on what it normally is able to is really, really good. So really like the deck. We saw it only very briefly, but Altar of Dementia, even for the four cards that it milled, was really good because it hit a Karmic Guide and a Ray of Dawnbringer while we had Miraculous Recovery in hand. And that basically just set up our whole ending part of the game. We were in really good shape after that, so... I was definitely impressed by Altar of Dementia. Did not get to see Mesmeric Orb in this game, but still another one that I'm interested in trying out as well. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching.